This afternoon, Connected Nation, in partnership with AT&T, is excited to bring you details of three new free programs aimed at improving digital equity and inclusion across the Bluegrass State. We're coming to you live from the Boys and Girls Club of Hopkinsville, the Hopkinsville Christian County Public Library, and the Digital Works Facility in Oak Grove, Kentucky, right across from the front gate of Fort Campbell. And that's where we'll begin today with details of our new digital works program and our digital literacy and learning programs. Good afternoon. I'm Tom Faree, Chairman and CEO of Connected Nation. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to Connected Nation's celebration of Military Family Appreciation Month and an announcement of our new digital literacy and training initiatives. November is a time when families gather for Thanksgiving, but is also a time when we gather and recognize the sacrifices and challenges that family members make in support of their loved ones in uniform. We are honored to be here today at our Fort Campbell Digital Works Hub. We opened this facility in 2019 with the express intent to support the families in and around this installation. Military connected adults face unique challenges related to employment, including frequent moves, the need for flexibility based on their service commitments, the limitations of career growth opportunities from living in rural areas, and other life-altering transitions. In particular, the military spouse faces an unemployment rate nearly 10 times the national average due to the demands that come with military life. Through our Digital Works program, we offer digital skills and jobs training program services that lead to careers in remote jobs and flexibility that they need when moving from station to station every two years or so. Our graduates include military spouses, veterans, and members of the Fort Campbell community. On behalf of our entire Connected Nation family, it is our greatest gratitude to express to family members, veterans, and transitioning soldiers for their service and sacrifice to our country. In today's world, the lack of a reliable, affordable broadband connection is a major disadvantage to many. This digital divide is a national affliction impacting an estimated 42 million Americans. This marginalizes some 43% of low-income households and a whopping 17 million school-aged children. We are a company dedicated to closing this digital divide. Establishing the physical connection is the necessary first step, but it's digital literacy and skills training that are the critical components to driving adoption and thereby unleashing the limitless potential of the digital economy. Access to reliable high-speed internet is the foundation upon which digital work students can find remote jobs. And while we have made tremendous strides in advancing broadband access, adoption, and use, there is still much to do. The pandemic marked a pivotal moment in history, one that exposed the urgency for leaders and their time to address the challenges resulted in significant federal and state response. Among several pieces of legislation, Congress allocated $65 billion through the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, also known as the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, coincidentally signed into law one year exactly today. This law was intended to accelerate the deployment of high-speed internet and the opportunities for all Americans. In Kentucky, thanks to Governor Bashir's leadership, we are experiencing a historic investment in funds that are going to advance reliable and affordable high-speed internet across the whole state. And while Governor Bashir could not join us today due to scheduling conflicts, we are honored that he has been able to send us a video. Hello everyone, I'm Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir, and I am proud to be joining Connected Nation, a nonprofit founded in our Commonwealth to support their efforts in closing the digital divide. The pandemic put an emphasis on the need for all of our citizens to have high-speed, reliable internet. This access allows folks to stay informed and connected to school, work, family, church, healthcare services, and more. And when we invest in high-speed internet, we see long-lasting benefits for our people. I say that after seeing the impact firsthand. In June, I announced the largest public investment in the expansion of broadband in our history, 46 grants totaling more than $89 million matched by private sector dollars, reaching a total of over 200 million to bring high-speed internet to unserved homes and businesses in our Commonwealth. And we're seeing the benefits. And it's great to know that progress will continue 
to be built on with incredible partners like Connected Nation. And part of their efforts is developing key programs you'll be learning about today. These programs empower both youth and adults by providing skills and knowledge that can help improve their day-to-day -day lives. I have to say, as a dad to a teenager and an almost teen, I'm really excited about some of these opportunities like Teens Teach Tech. This is a program that gets teens involved in their communities by helping older adults use technology. And even better, they get paid to do so. Another priority for Connected Nation is supporting Kentucky's true heroes, our veterans, military, and their families. We must always give thanks for the bravery, selflessness, and dedication of these heroes. They gave us an incredible gift, the gift of freedom. And it's so important we do everything to support them in return. So before I close, I want to commend Connected Nation for their efforts and support of our people and for building a brighter future for generations to come. You're making a difference. And as governor and as a dad, I'm grateful. Thank you and keep up the great work. Thank you, Governor Brashear. You know, Kentucky is also fortunate to have recently named Megan Sandfoss as the Executive Director of the Office of Broadband Development for the Commonwealth. Unfortunately, she is also unable to be here with us today, but has passed these following statements. The Kentucky Office of Broadband Development applauds Connected Nations efforts to increase digital literacy and close the digital skills gap in our Commonwealth. Access to high-speed internet helps our communities attract well-paying jobs and compete in the global economy and thereby, thereby improving the digital skills of our workforce to help us compete for technologies, career centers, and 21st century jobs. The expansion of broadband infrastructure is important for the economic growth of our Commonwealth, and increased adoption in technology and improvement in digital skills will improve the economic well-being of our citizens. We look forward to working with Connected Nation and the other partners to improve access to broadband and increasing digital equity and inclusion in our Commonwealth. Thank you, Megan. You know, for 20 years, Connected Nation has partnered with many public and private organizations to bridge the digital divide by tackling the issues related to broadband access, adoption, and use. We are proud of our partners who share our commitment to ensuring that everyone has access to high-speed internet and the skills to use it meaningfully. One of those faithful partners has been AT&T. We have recently launched a digital literacy and learning program in collaboration with AT&T, and through this program, we are offering in-person and virtual digital literacy training workshops in unserved areas. And these are the areas across the country where training is needed most for digital empowerment of our residents. We are happy to join AT&T Kentucky for the celebration and announcement today of these workshops, and we will be hosting them across Kentucky. Together, we are not only sharing our commitment to digital literacy, but also in helping the military community. Accordingly, since August, Connected Nation, in partnership with AT&T, has been hosting digital literacy workshops for military families via our Digital Works program. And now it gives me great pleasure to honor Amanda Litch, the Regional Director for AT&T Kentucky, for a few comments. Amanda? Thank you, Tom. At AT&T, we are focused on connecting people to greater possibility with expertise, simplicity, and inspiration. That is why we are delighted to join our partners in Connected Nation and other honored guests here today to celebrate Military Families Month and to share some good news impacting the Fort Campbell community and beyond. Advancing digital literacy is a key part of helping to close the digital divide. It's important that families not only have accessible and affordable internet options, but also have access to the resources and training which give them the skills needed to be successful, engaged citizens of a digital world. What better occasion than today, National Philanthropy Day, to share that as part of $6 million in contributions, AT&T is bringing bilingual, in-person, digital literacy workshops to more than 400 libraries and community centers across the country. That includes right here at the Fort Campbell Digital Works location. We are partner with, partnering with Connected Nation to hold six virtual or in-person digital literacy training sessions in this very facility. Digital literacy workshops can help people learn how to use computers, mobile devices, and internet resources. In addition, 
These workshops focus on commonly used apps essential to managing personal fi finances, applying for jobs, pursuing an education, accessing telehealth services, and more. We want to help folks participate safely and responsibly in today's increasingly connected world. One of the reasons I'm so excited to be working with Connected Nation to bring these workshops here is the opportunity to impact military families. For over 100 years, AT&T has supported active military personnel, their families, and veterans. At AT&T, we recognize how valuable veterans' leadership, critical thinking, and diverse perspectives can be. And we have invested in programs focused on the transition from military service to a civilian corporate setting. We continue to invest in and recruit talented veterans and military spouses into our business, which may be one reason that AT&T has been on the Military Times Best for Vets list for nine consecutive years. At AT&T, relationships matter, and it is indeed our privilege to collaborate with Connected Nation to benefit our military families in the Fort Campbell area and beyond. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Now I'm excited to introduce to you a great friend and a great partner to Connected Nation. Colonel Hedges is a trusted partner and friend, as I mentioned, for our organization for a number of years now, and has really been a driving force behind our Digital Works program. Colonel Hedges faithfully served our country for over 28 years, and after retiring, he and his wife Allison co-founded GS2, an organization committed to maximizing Kentucky's relationship with the Department of Defense to spur economic growth across our state to promote military veterans as a viable workforce solution and to improve the general quality of life for service members, veterans, and their families. I would now like to ask Colonel Hedges to approach and give us a few comments. Colonel. Hey, first, I just want to tell everybody it's an absolute uh, pleasure to be here today. And, and to Tom and Amanda, thank you for everything that you and your organizations are doing to bridge the digital divide and everything on your uh, broadband efforts. I can tell you firsthand that there is a uh, need in the military communities, both in and out of uniform. Having served uh, proudly and honorably for almost three decades, I'd like to share a few of those examples with you. Uh, right now. And so I'm going to kind of break it down on folks currently serving and military installations, and then I'll hit veterans, retirees, and their families. And so uh, as, as folks that are currently serving, probably one of the worst things that can happen is you're forced to go fight the nation's war. You go on a deployment, you're out there, and you get that one opportunity to call home. And what happens? You can't make the connection. I mean, it will suck the life right out of you. And, you know, it's, it's either on, um, you know, your efforts uh, or on their efforts, but uh, it is a serious problem and it needs to be addressed. Uh, quality of life. Uh, you know, the young folks of America today, they like to, they like to do a little gaming. I know uh, my wife likes to do a little online shopping, which uh, I do myself a little bit. Uh, educational requirements. You know, everybody knows what happened in COVID. I can't even fathom for the folks that were sitting at home and they had to do online schooling or they were doing uh, homeschooling and they didn't have access uh, to broadband. And then of course, uh, in the military, you move every two or three years. And so you build friends along the way. And of course you've got family members like your grandparents uh, being able to stay, to stay in touch with them uh, is critical. It's critical to keeping you happy. It's critical to keeping your family happy and um, making sure that uh, in that particular scenario, broadband is, is absolutely vital. And then the next one is uh, near and dear to my heart, it's spouse employment. Uh, Tom Free has already talked about the unemployment rate. I'll tell you uh, what he didn't say is uh, when they are employed, uh, they're employed at 25% less than their counterparts. And quite frankly, I think it's, they're, they're, they're actually discriminated against. Um, but a military spouse needs flexibility. 
they need flexibility because uh, they've got to take the kids to school. They got to take the kids uh, to practices. Uh, the service members out on deployments. They're out on field training exercises. And the best thing that they can do is uh, have access to broadband. So it is absolutely critical. Sorry about that. Uh, I can tell you the Pentagon recently called the high military spouse unemployment rate a threat to force readiness and our national security. Uh, the Army missed its recruitment mission for the first time this year uh, for an all-volunteer force. Uh, do you guys know why? Did broadband, broadband or lack of broadband have something to do with it? I don't know. But according to the 2020 Census Bureau, 625 cities were ranked according to the number of households that lacked broadband internet subscriptions of any type, including smartphone plans. Of those 625, 20 prime military communities were within the worst 200. I'm gonna name just four that stand out to me. Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Fort Hood, Texas. Joint Base Lewis McCord in Washington State. And then Fort Benning, Georgia. Uh, I'm going to move on to veterans, retirees, and their families. Uh, this is a large group that sacrifices, quite frankly, more than most can fathom. Uh, a large percentage of retirees stay in um, where they retired, or they'll go to another duty station that they really liked, and they'll retire from there. Uh, but I will tell you, there's a lot of them that are, are disabled at this time. They're fighting with post-traumatic stress disorder, and they got to have access to health care. Broadband is critical in today's society to have that access because you could sit there and you can meet with your doctors, you can get your uh, prescription medication, everything can be done as long as you got good access to uh, broadband. And then, of course, they need a viable job. Well, some of them aren't uh, physically in a situation where uh, they prefer to go out. And so it's good to be able to work from home. The only way that that's possible, again, is to have uh, good broadband. And then I'll tell you, uh, in my house, and I'll give you a, a personal uh, story here, we've got uh, a little lake house in Litchfield, Kentucky. Uh, we choose to spend a lot of time there, actually, and uh, I work from home, and it would be fantastic to be able to work at the lake house, but there is no broadband. And going back to what I said earlier, a lot of retirees, they retire around the military installation, and again, it's just something that needs to be fixed. Uh, therefore, I'm here, here today. Uh, and specifically why uh, my company, Government Solutions and Services, or GS2, is proud to be a partner with Connected Nation and AT&T. And I would ask you, join GS2, me, AT&T, Connected Nation, on our efforts to bring this essential technology to more military communities across the country. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Edges. Now, please join me in welcoming our Operations Manager for Digital Works, Ms. Tammy Spring, to share with you some news about some special students that we have here today. Tammy? Good afternoon. Thank you so much, Tom. I appreciate that. So first and foremost, um, something that I wanted to mention was we are working very closely with AT&T on those um, individual workshops and classes across the state of Kentucky. If you or anyone you know would be a good fit for that, please reach out to us at Connected Nation. You can actually go there. There's a certain web page where you can learn more about how to be part of those workshops. And it's a great opportunity for people to actually get those basics that maybe they didn't have access access to before. However, if there if you want to go one step further, right? Digital works is what we operate on here at, through Connected Nation at the Fort Campbell branch. We have been in operation here since 2000, well, since 2019, at the end of 2019. And we have catered specifically to the military. So it's the veterans, the spouses of the veterans and the surrounding community. As such, we are proud to report that we now have graduates, not in one state, but in 25, U.S. states, as well as Germany and Korea. And that is all because of the grassroots motion that Tom and Connected Nation allowed us to start in 2013, way back in one state. So I'm, I'm very proud of that. Um, the landscape continues to change, right? COVID changed the landscape immensely. However, the needs have always been the same. People are interested in learning how to work from home 
how to safely work from home and how to navigate through that process. And that's what Digital Works is here to do. It's here to help them through that process so that way they can not just adapt, but overcome any of those obstacles that are out there in front of them. <clears throat> To date here at the Fort Campbell location, we have 169 graduates. No small feat, right? And, and really a great job to the staff and everybody here. Um, however, we wanted to make sure that as we approach this next class getting ready to graduate next week, that we took just a moment to explain to you a little bit about the training. The training leads to the job placement. The job placement leads to mentoring. And sometimes you are lucky enough to have somebody sit in one of these classes that is just a blessing. They go above and beyond when it comes to mentoring. They wanna help others. They're always constantly going that extra mile. So in March of 2022, we were absolutely blessed to have somebody sit in our class. As a matter of fact, we are gonna um, recognize them here in just a moment, but we are wanted to tell you just a little bit about him. He um, took the course, he finished the course, and within a month he was on with a remote company here locally. And to this date, he still goes on. We use Slack and other tools to help our students. He still goes on and encourages students and puts on little tidbits about important jobs and stuff that he just heard about. And I, I am absolutely pleased and honored to be able to recognize as our graduate of the year, Mr. Colby Davenport. See if I can turn it the right way. Thank you so much. Um, first and foremost, I uh, want to give a huge thanks uh, to my family, of course, uh, for supporting me in another uh, almost scary but uh, necessary transition for success. I want to thank uh, Connected Nation, uh, at and of course, and Digital Works as a program uh, for setting me up for that success. Specifically, Miss Melissa Anderson, um, it's not lost on me. Without a great teacher, none of this would really be possible. Um, she really goes above and beyond for all of her students, um, making sure that they're going to be successful when they leave this course uh, and are able to find a, a meaningful career out of that. Uh, it was never lost on me when I left Fort Hood the very last day and I had my DD-214 in my hand that I was going to need necessary skills to really succeed in the civilian sector of life. Um, and for a long time, I didn't really know I had those skills, right? The military and the civilian language don't always uh, jive, so to speak. Uh, Ms. Anderson was able, absolutely able to um, assist me, um, I guess I could say in translating uh, and putting all that on paper. So once again, thank you all. Uh, That's an absolute wonderful honor. Thank you. At this time, we do have a second student that we would like to recognize. However, um, they were unable to join us today. So I'm going to ask Melissa, would you come and tell us just a little bit about our second awardee? Absolutely. All right. It's an honor to recognize our second graduate of the year for 2022 as well, Taisha Vernado. She's unable to be here because she's in mandatory training for her remote position, so which is great news. Um, but we definitely want to recognize her. She um, completed the course while PCSing from Germany to Fort Campbell. So she is just a demonstration of resilience, and I'm beyond proud of her for reaching out. She is actually working in a remote position with a veteran service organization. So it has absolutely come full circle for Taisha, and I'm so grateful that her husband was able to come today um, to accept the award on her behalf. So, Cornell, thank you so much for showing up. I appreciate it. Thank you. With that, I'm going to hand it back over to Tom. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tammy. And Melissa, let me ask you to come back up here and join me. We have uh, the, the great honor of having another distinguished uh, guest in our presence today uh, and one that's worthy of recognition. Uh, Melissa, why don't you do introductions to our, our next guest? Absolutely. 
So the next award that we would like to give out, it's my honor and privilege to recognize Carissa Poe of Blue Star Families Tennessee Chapter for being Community Partner of the Year for Digital Works. Um, she has been amazing at sharing our mission widely with her membership. Um, Blue Star Families works to connect the community with the military community and the local community so that they can thrive together and feel like one large family. So um, they have, they do a survey every year. They've consistently recognized that military spouse employment is an absolute need. And so they are happy to partner with us, continue to drive people our direction. And I'm just beyond grateful for all of your work. So thank you, Carissa. If you could come over here. Carissa Poe, thank you. All right, we'd love for you to say a word, please. I would like to thank Digital Works Connected Nations, AT&T, for, of course, your opportunities that you provide to our military families within this community. It's been an absolute pleasure to partner with you all since I came in the role of chapter director in 2019. I was able to, of course, share with military families uh, the opportunity to be trained because, of course, as Melissa stated, uh, military spouse unemployment and underemployment has continued to be one of the top five issues that we have seen on the military uh, family lifestyle survey that Blue Star Family conducts every year. So we are, of course, grateful for the partnership and the opportunity to refer our families for them to get trained and, of course, in hopes to, of course, bridge that gap that we consistently see. And, of course, uh, thankful to, of course, Melissa for her continued partnership and um, pushing, of course, the information our way so that we can share that information. And we look forward to continue growing this partnership and get more families trained up, more um, veterans, of course, spouses, and everyone, of course. And I like that it's actually spread to the community. So, And with it being digital, with Blue Star Families, we have chapters in uh, 11 other locations. So we, of course, will be sharing with those families as well uh, through our career partnership. And thank you all. All right. Thank you, Carissa. Uh, join me one more time in a round of applause for our distinguished guests and our awardees today. You're certainly the best reflection of our work as, as, as you take from, from here uh, our mission into the community. So thank you uh, on behalf of Connected Nation. Now, that's a wrap from here at the Digital Works Hub outside of Fort Campbell, but it is not the end of the day. We are very excited to now cut over to our uh, Executive Vice President of Digital Equity and Inclusion, Ms. Heather Gate. Uh, she joins us from just down the road in Hopkinsville at the Public Library to share some details on another program that we're excited to present here with AT&T uh, through our Connected Nation partnership. So, Heather, take it away. Thank you, Tom. Good afternoon and welcome to the Hopkinsville Christian County Public Library, where I'll be joined by some special guests for an, a great announcement. It is especially exciting for me to be here at a library because libraries have a near and dear place in my heart for everything they do for our communities, for providing access to right here in this room, public access computers, to accessing books, reading programs, and all the great things that libraries do for us. Libraries play a pivotal role in helping communities bridge the digital divide. Whether, when it comes to the digital divide, what are we talking about? We are talking about the gap between those that have access to reliable and affordable internet at home, those who have an internet enabled device that meets their needs at home, and those that have the skills to use these devices. And then on the other hand, those that do not. And for those that do not have access, access to affordable devices and skills to use these devices, the library has become a sanctuary where they can come to get assistance, whether it is, again, using computers. And just this afternoon being in this library, amazing experience. The number of people that I saw coming in seeking assistance. It, within a 30 minute period, I saw people coming in to ask information about websites, about printing, and various other activities that the libraries have to do every day. So why am I here today? As Tom mentioned earlier, Connected Nation is partnered with AT&T to host digital literacy workshops across the country. 
The program is part of AT&T's National Digital Literacy Initiative to help narrow the digital divide. We are partnering with community anchor institutions, libraries, schools, places of worship, in any organization across the state of Kentucky that recognizes the need for digital skills in the community. As part of this program, we are happy and excited to partner with the library right here. And so I'm gonna invite our ex the executive director of the library, Deanna Sovi, to join me for a discussion. Hey, how are you? Deanna. Hi. So can you tell us a little bit more about why you decided to part participate in this program and why this library is so important to this community. We're the only library in the county of Christian County. So we provide service for over 70,000 individuals in Christian County. Um, we were already preparing and in the process of looking how to create some programs specifically to help people of all ages, whether you're young, middle-aged, or senior adults, and trying to help them understand how to navigate their email, how to navigate Microsoft Office products, um, how to understand their mobile devices. So this partnership has come along, couldn't have happened at a more perfect opportunity. So much. Well, as, as we said earlier, the libraries are not about the books anymore. So what else are you doing here to help bridge the digital divide? So we are much more than books. Um, as you can see in our this room, this is kind of our techno technology center. But we also just recently started checking out laptops um, to the public to take home. They can also check out laptops to use inside of the library and also tablets. So they can use those tablets inside the library as well. We have mobile hotspots. So now you have a laptop and you have a mobile hotspot. So you've created a technology kit per se that um, that the community can use as they mentioned earlier you know broadband it continues to be a problem in some areas are of christian county and so um being able to have these classes partnering with what we're already doing to try to reach the technology portion to reach that out into our community it could not be a better partnership that is wonderful and we are so excited to be providing a trainer to come and assist with the workshops not only do we send a trainer but we're also going to be using curriculum that was graciously um, developed by at and mm -hmm. in partnership with the public library association and so let's talk about where and when and who can participate in these workshops so anyone can participate. We're The only limitation is based on the number of computers that we happen to have. So we have dates, two dates in January, January 5th and the 23rd, then also the 20th and 23rd of March. And there will be various um, programs will be offered during those January and March dates. We will have, it's a super easy link that you all have created for us to share that within the community. We have postcards, we'll have posters and information in the library that people will be able to scan those and sign up right from their digital device from their phone. We'll also create uh, information that we'll share on our social media pages and also on our website. So people also, again, can just go to the link and sign up from there and choose which classes. They can choose all four. They can choose um, which classes they want to take. The nice thing, the way this program is designed is, uh, for example, on January 5th, you have two different times on the same day to be able to take those classes. So not 11 o'clock doesn't work out for everyone. You know, one o'clock doesn't work out for everyone. So uh, the way the program is designed, it really makes it convenient for the time of the day for people to be able to access this information. Thank you so much. Um, can you tell, talk a little bit about what the options are? Uh, mm -hmm. Through the program, we partner with organizations such as yours and we work together in selecting what are the best co classes for that community. So can you talk about yes. a so little we, bit? We do. We, so we have um, the email basics, uh, internet basics, uh, cybersecurity, mobile devices is some of the, the four that we're going to focus on. And again, those are all classes that we as a staff are in the process of creating already. So I think that this link in exactly to what our community has already told us that they wanted from us anyway. You all have already created it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Deanna. I am in awe of libra librarians understanding that you all's role is not only about checking out books, it's helping with people that walk in and have all kinds of requests for assistance. Yes. And so I am eternally grateful and again, express my appreciation for your commitment to helping the community especially being the only library in this we community are, yeah. thank you thank you so much thank you so much and now i would like to invite our 
our partner in training, our representative, Holly Spade. Holly is the Director of Legislative Affairs with AT&T Kentucky. Holly. Thank you so much, Heather. I, I really have enjoyed being in this beautiful library today, and thank you for what you do, Deanna, Deanna and what the library does. Uh, we also really appreciate our partnership with um, this great organization of Connected Nation. Um, and I want you uh, to think today about what this announcement means. I mean, if you think about the young people uh, who will graduate from college in the coming year, 2023, let's say, for them, they don't know uh, what life was like without a smartwatch or they do know, they wouldn't know life without a smartwatch is what I'm trying to say. And um, in addition to that, they've never had a phone that didn't have a camera. Um, they've always been able to pay for things using a phone. So for those folks, um, the digital world is second nature, uh, but we don't all fit within that category. Um, those folks make, make up one quarter of the U.S. population, um, but for those of us who need assistance, a, adult digital literacy is very important. Families, and especially parents, uh, not only need accessible and affordable internet options, they also have access to digital literacy resources that teach them the skills needed to benefit from the internet. Public libraries play a vital role in providing access to the internet devices and digital content and knowledgeable staff. Everybody, regardless of ethnicity, income, status, or any other demographic, has that access. In 2019, nearly 54 million Americans accessed the internet at a public location. Libraries provided 224 million public internet use sessions. During the pandemic, libraries expanded that um, to include Wi-Fi and loaned devices to folks to make accessibility even more of an option. So AT&T has teamed up with the Public Library Association to launch 12 digital literacy courses in a curated series. These courses are designed to help those who are new to digital technology build skills and confidence to use computers and mobile devices safely and responsibly. The first three digital literacy courses we've launched in collaboration with the Public Library Association are basic search, navigating a website, and intro to email. Other courses will involve using passwords and avoiding scams. These courses will be accessible on the internet and free to everyone. At AT&T, we're committed not just to helping folks survive, but to helping them succeed and prosper in today's online connected world. Seizing the opportunities, maximizing the benefits of technology begins with digital literacy. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Move my stuff. Thank you, Holly, and thank you, Deanna. And now, this marks the end of our library announcement. But don't go away. We have one more location to join. Emily Jordan is standing by at the Boys and Girls Club of Hopkinsville, Christian County, with more exciting news. Over to you, Emily. Thanks so much, Heather. Connected Nation is excited to be working with community organizations through our partnership with AT&T. One great resource that we're promoting is the Achievery, a free digital learning platform designed and created by AT&T in collaboration with Warner Brothers Discovery as part of their Connected Learning program. The Achievery is a great way to keep kids engaged in and out of the classroom and is an awesome tool for after school programs like here at the Boys and Girls Club. Um, the reason we're here today to round out our day at the Boys and Girls Club of Hopkinsville is to talk about our new program created by Connected Nation called Teens Teach Tech, powered by AT&T. Through participation in this program, we're empowering teens to be leaders in their communities, show off their tech savvy, and help the adults in their lives to better use technology. We will meet one of the groups um, taking part in this fun opportunity in just a bit, but first I'd love to introduce the Executive Director of the Boys and Girls Club of Hopkinsville, Terrence Davis, to tell us more about their program. Thank you. My name is Terrence Davis. I'm the CEO of the Boys and Girls Club here in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. 
the Boys and Girls Club is a youth development center that focuses on academic success, healthy lifestyles, and character development. Uh, we serve 85 kids every single day uh, with tutoring, a hot meal, and mentoring. We are standing in our teen STEAM lab where there's a variety of different technology from 3D printing to screen printing, uh, laser cutting. Our kids, our teens, um, can become certified using any of these disciplines and then they can have their own uh, projects. Um, we're now going to throw this to some of our teens uh, to teach all about how to TikTok. And I'm Kyara, and we are members of the Boys and Girls Club of Hawkinsville, Kentucky. Today we're going to teach you how to record, upload a TikTok video. So first you look your sound up and everything. Um, you can click on a video and it'll show you how to do the dance. But then when you're ready to do the TikTok, you can click on this little circle at the bottom. And then you can look at the videos and you can learn to dance. Sometimes they have tutorials under there. When you're ready, you can cl click this button down there. And then when you're there, you can find any filter you want to find. So today we're going to look up Gentle Glow. And when you're ready, you can set the video up. Before we start doing the dance, you can, um, so when you're ready, you can press the timer, and then the little countdown. So when you're ready, you can just press start. And then when you finish that, yes. you can add text, stickers, you can even adjust the clips, all right here, yes. in the top right. But then when you think your video is done and you, it's perfect, you can press, yes. you can press um, next. Mm -hmm. And then in the little text box up, in the little text box up here, you can add hashtags like. For instance, we're at the Boys and Girls Club, so you can hashtag Boys and Girls Club. And you can add your friends, like if they was in the video, like me and her just made a video, at Takaya. And right here, you can add where you, like the exact location that you're at. And then you can allow comments, you can allow people to do it. And then, add more options, you can save it to your device. And like after you got all of this, you can just post right here and yeah thank you for watching us making us like you do an acting video thank you Thank you, girls. I would really love that gentle glow filter on me, please. That would be, let's teach me how to do that. Um, but we are thrilled to announce that this team you just saw is the first to register in Kentucky. Um, but we are accepting applications nationwide now. So all high school age teens with a mentor who want to participate are welcome to apply. Um, but now it is my pleasure to introduce the president of AT&T Kentucky, Carlos Sanchez. Thank you, Emily, and I'm so excited to be here at the Boys and Girls Club in Hopkinsville. This is fantastic, great afternoon, great job that uh, we, we just saw here. And uh, basically, as uh, we talk with folks here in the club, I've been reminded that your zip code shouldn't determine the opportunities in your life. Where you live shouldn't define your dreams. That simple statement is at the heart of what AT&T believes about education, very simply, education is foundational to long-term socioeconomic success for individuals, their families, and for communities. And there is nothing more impactful we can do for a community than to invest in the economic success of its children. Yes, we do it by investing in broadband, which powers growth and innovation in education. It provides critical access to information, more opportunities to learn and collaborate from anywhere, and fosters new interactive teaching and learning applications. And we do it through AT&T Connected Learning, our multi-year commitment to help stem the tide of learning loss, narrow the homework gap, and create compelling educational content. 
One part of that is the Achiever, as uh, Emily mentioned, a free digital learning platform designed to make distance learning more engaging. Nearly 80% of both parents and teachers think that their kids or students would be more interested in learning tools than include popular entertainment. So we work with Warner Brothers Discovery to create the Achievery, entertaining educational content paired with engaging lesson plans and learning activities. And we now are collaborating with Connecting Nation to bring this free digital learning platform to organizations in the CN network. I look forward to how these resources will benefit the young people here at this club. I'm also looking forward to the state championship in eSports coming here to this club later uh, in, in the year and next year. We want to be a part of that too. So Terrence, if you will come up, we're here uh, to present a check to help uh, make that uh, championship a reality. Thank you so much. Hold it, yeah. and then you get some shot. <laughs> so on behalf of AT&T, we're very uh, proud to present this support to the Boys and Girls Club of Hopkinsville. I'm going to applaud. That's great. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's so wonderful. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, that wraps up our day. Thank you to everyone who joined us today. We're so happy to bring all of these programs to communities like this completely free of charge. To learn more about our work uh, with the Digital Learning and Literacy Program or Teens Teach Tech, please head to connectednation.org.